it's a lot of pressure getting dressed knowing you're on the show. I'll tell you that oh, because you always look so impeccable. It, you look like you actually have not changed since the Globes. I'm sure you did because. I you, changed. But you just look like you're always ready for a huge well, you event. You coming on Ellen. Yeah, I had to put well, on a tie. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. Thank very you. elegant, very Thank elegant. You. Um, I love this movie. I called you and you. and you praised you for. I can't believe it's your first film that you've directed. It is, you know, you imagine it's going to be beautiful because you have such a vision and, and creativity and color and everything. But just the the performances and everything was so good. I love that film. I can't Thank believe you. It, it was your first film. It was my first film. But you know, style without substance is not worth very much. So the most important yes. thing to me was to have a great story, and it's really. A romance, uh, I think. It's a lot of things, but it's really romance. And I've had so many uh, women friends uh, email me and call me saying they hadn't seen their boyfriends or husband cry in so long, and they took them to see this movie. So oh, anyway, that's it's great. a romance. That's great. Yeah, it is. It's just, uh, and the feel of it, the 60s, and just every kind of, uh, just visually, it's just, you feel like you're there in that time, everything about it. And Thank you. so when you, you're, you're from Texas, right? You were born I was born in Texas. I grew up in Santa Fe, New uh -huh. Mexico. And uh, moved to New York when I was 17. So you, how do you get from? Because you're you're this huge fashion designer, and you go from being this very successful designer into directing. Uh, I don't know. It felt really natural, and I don't mean that in an egotistical way. I think people don't realize that fashion is actually quite collaborative. And the most important thing in both fields, I think, is that you have a vision, you have something to say. And then you're able to, you know, you have to hire a team of people to help you put that together and create an environment where they could feel they can give you their best and then guide them. It, it felt really natural. And you are, anyway, uh, a, a, would you call yourself a workaholic or is that a bad word? Well, I love my work. And, I, you know, the thing I love most in life, other than Richard, who I've lived with for 23 years, and my dogs, uh, it, it is my work. I love it. I'm very passionate about it. So it isn't work to me. People always say, what do you do for fun? And I say, well, I work. And you said you moved to New York when you were 17, is that right? Yeah, 17. Okay, so you, you come from New Mexico? Little Santa Fe, Santa New Mexico, Fe. yeah. You go to New York City, yep. and within two weeks, you're hanging out with Andy Warhol? Yes, I was. How does that happen? Uh, well, I think I was kind of cute. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. That's it? Well, I think back, you know, back in that time period, and, and I think Andy sort of liked cute guys. Uh -huh. and, uh, yeah, so... So you just put yourself in an area that you knew, like in a club or something? And no, he... no, 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 no. I had a guy in an art history class, and he kept sort of coming on to me. And I didn't realize that, because I had no idea I was gay, and I didn't really even realize that existed. And I just thought, poor thing, he has no friends. And uh, <laughs> one day I was sitting in my dorm room, and I thought, God, I wish something would happen to me. I wish somebody would just knock on my door. The guy said, do you want to go to the studio? And I said, sure. So I went to Studio 54, and that was that. There was Andy Warhol. Yeah. And, then, and then that sort of, then you had access to people where you started your... Oh, I had tremendous access at that period of my life to, to everyone you can think of. And, and some of them are still quite good friends. But that period also for me, this was the late 70s in New York. Uh, and it, it influenced my design sensibility. It influenced everything. Because I think the moment you first see things that you think of as beautiful, mm -hmm. somehow those things kind of stay with you. So that period for me is maybe what I perceive as, as the most beautiful sort of time period for style and design. Yeah. Well, you've done an amazing job uh, in, in every area that you've... Uh, and I can't wait for your next film. Thank you. Just quickly, I just want... Because the phone call in that movie is so powerful. Mm -hmm. And the voice on the other end of that phone, when you see the film, if you haven't yet, um, the voice on the other end of that phone call to Colin Firth is... I'm not allowed to say. Oh, I'll say. No, because you can't. Because oh. I was sitting next to this gentleman, who's the voice on the phone, and I, I said to him, you know, would you come in and loop this for me tomorrow? We're friends. And he said, absolutely. He came in. I got a phone call from his agent. Don't you ever call a client directly, blah, 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 blah. You can't credit him. So anyway, I don't know who. You can say who you think it might be. I think it might be John Hamm. I don't know. But you figure it out when you watch the movie. But uh, wow. I can't believe you can't say. And I don't know. I'm just guessing. No, um, you can say. You can right. say. You can say. Um, you will love this film if you haven't seen it.